all right so welcome back um anyway we're about 24 hours from christmas eve and i kind of felt like well if i took off uh that uh, I would land in La Paz on Christmas Eve. Now, I only briefly looked uh, on Airbnb for availability. It seemed at least a little cheaper. Um, so I wasn't exactly sure what to do. Uh, but it turned out like uh, the Airbnb host where I'm at said, you know, eh, you can stay with me a little bit, uh, you know, till New Year's or whatever. And I was like, eh. I was kind of ready to go. And then also um, a viewer of the show was, you know, emailing me a little bit. Hey, want to go have tacos or something and this is not the first viewer of the show that I've met uh, actually there's a another fella uh, named Vaughn he's like yo uh, I'm moving to El Paso and uh, uh, you know can you pick me up from the Greyhound station and I'm like well uh, you know I, I'm always hey how are you I'm always trying to be like a nice guy and, and so I'm like, why not? So, you know, Vaughn shows up to the uh, Greyhound station packing a gun and everything. So, uh, and Vaughn's totally fine and totally normal guy. So, I, I mean, you know, it's not like he tried to do anything, but... Uh, so I had this guy named Tony emailing me here, going, hey, you know, let's meet for tacos and stuff like that. Um, and, and I was like, oh, okay, you know what I mean? But, you know, I just never can tell why anybody wants to meet is, is what I'm getting at. But I decided to meet. We talked for about four hours yesterday afternoon. So... You know, this worked out pretty well. I, I, I mean, I'm really surprised. Uh, you know, it's interesting, you guys, uh, who watch the Scotty Bear show. He thought I should share more Tijuana stories with you and all that good stuff. I mean, I have toothpaste on my mouth. I apologize. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some coffee, if you don't mind. I will... Uh, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So we're gonna mukbang a few um, street burritos. Uh, I got one chorizo con papa for me and one chorizo con papa for you. So uh, there's that. We're gonna talk a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, getting out of here and meeting with another viewer. Hmm. It is about, uh, I guess, maybe about 7 a.m. And uh, you don't want the trees to come pop off? I'll eat it. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I'm like that. I'm in, uh, I'm in Sonata Penthouse. Hanging out some additional days. I mean, so, uh, Mexican culture, uh, Christmas Eve is just a little more significant than it is in the United States. Like, in the United States, Christmas Eve is last minute Christmas shopping and, you know, family coming in and everything like that, which is pretty much the same here. I mean, a lot of people that live here in, near the border have family driving down. So unlike, unlike going to the United States, um, most of the traffic should be traveling this way to Mexico. 
The lady I know across the street, her family just arrived late last night. And um, I, I tell you what I like about uh, Christmas in Mexico is tamales. It's a huge thing in, in Mexican culture. Uh, the tamales, tamales with Rojas is pretty good. Plus, I get to hang out, have a few more conversations with Tony, the uh, the viewer of the show. He said I should tell you guys more Tijuana stories, which I probably will. If you look back at some of my older videos, um, you can see quite a few Tijuana stories. Me hanging out with the cartel, buying weed from the cartel, all this stuff. Many people don't know, but there's different types of cartel, you know, murderers, cartel, drug dealers, people, people smugglers, there's all, all types, you know what I mean? There's not crossovers, we do everything, you know? So the ones that smuggle drugs probably aren't going to kill you. The ones that smuggle guns, they may break out and have to kill you, but it's not necessarily uh, what they do. They bring in somebody that knows how to do that. I know this because the cartel was staying at one of the hotels where I was at. So they told me everything. Because it's like, it's like everybody in their family. I mean, not everybody, but you know, like their brothers and cousins and shit. So... Hmm. Can't miss that, right? Coffee is pretty good today. I'm going to eat yours if you don't eat it. No, another one. I'll eat it. These are. 22 pesos down the street from a guy that sells it out of the back of his car. So. so I'm going to spend Christmas here, Christmas Day. Try to leave the day after Christmas. She said, the Airbnb host, she said, oh, you know, hey, you can stay till... Maybe New Year's. Mm. I wonder if Airbnbs kind of get cheaper um, after that point. I, I don't know. Let me look at that. I'm still worried about, you know, this variant a little bit. This is in the back of my mind. There are... Um, like Texas A&M decided like they were just going to cancel a bowl game. Now they're trying to find a new opponent for the other side. NHL is on break. However, NHL was like uh, already kind of like just had two games. And of course, because the holidays and stuff, they take off. So I think they just bought themselves a couple additional days, I think was their strategy. This is kind of how it worked back when the, when the big C all got started was uh, they started canceling games and stuff and then and then the uh, tournament, the basketball tournament um, was about to begin and then they just pulled the plug on it. They were like, boom, we're done. And then, you know, all the leagues kind of followed suit and stuff like that and NFL was already finished, so there wasn't anything there. Uh, uh, baseball was just getting started back, so uh, you know it was maybe natural for them to go, and eh, we'll wait and see what happens. And uh, the NBA paused, and uh, then they had the quarantine. They finished the season quarantined over there in Disneyland.
So I'm hoping we don't get back to that. Hmm. Hmm. It's pretty brutal. You missed out. I guess it's Thursday, just Christmas Eve Eve. Tomorrow, Christmas Eve and Christmas. Christmas was it Saturday, and then six days after that, it's New Year's 2022. I mean, wow, just crazy. I remember thinking in like 2010, I was like, hey, 2020. Well, here it is, 2022, you know. Damn near 50 years old. Anyway, if I don't see you, have a great Merry Christmas, and I'll talk to you later.